If you're familiar with Aston Doe's 677, you've every right to believe that this yard, this Spanish yard, is particularly daring, really quite radical in its design and fit out. Well, they've got the AS5 here in Parma, and it certainly feels a lot more conservative, a lot more modest than the 677. It's an entirely different line of boat, of course, a flybridge cruiser, but it still exhibits some really clever little touches that are very satisfying. Now, on the aft end, we have a high-low platform. That's where you put your tender. I'll jump straight down there. And the reason for that is that the crew cabin is contained in this section with an additional bit of storage for your sea bobs just under here. Now, on this particular show model, they haven't configured this aft space as a crew cabin. I'll just climb down in there backwards and show you what it's all about. The access is a little bit tight. As you can see, the bed would ordinarily be over there for the crew with a little uh, light to see out onto that swim platform. And there'd be a, a little wet room further forward, just ahead of that, with a toilet in there, plus a little sink unit. But the owner of this particular boat favours using this simply for storage. So that's what he's done, and a very handy storage space it is too. Now if we climb back out and head back up this passerelle onto the starboard side of the cockpit, you'll see the first satisfying little trick that Aston Doe has integrated into this boat. And you get a hint of it right here. The basic principle, of course, is that on most cockpits on flybridge cruisers like this, you tend to have a settee that wraps around, right around the uh, aft end. But of course, in facing forward, that also blocks your view of the sea aft. So what they've done is reverse that. They've got a nice open kind of glass terrace there and an aft facing settee. And when you sit down, you get a beautiful view aft. And it also means you can keep an eye on your kids if they're enjoying water sports. And it does, I suppose, kind of cut you off a little bit from the occupants of that saloon. But at the same time, it feels very intimate, really quite a satisfying place to be. Now, if we move forward into the saloon, you'll see that the good news continues. As you might expect, we've got an aft galley. Of course, that services the flybridge very well, as well as the aft cockpit. Uh, we also have an ice maker down here to service those on that after tea. But what I like about this galley is the fact that while usually on many of these uh, cruisers you'd have a floor to ceiling fridge freezer, they've avoided that because they don't want to block the view or the light. So we have instead an enormous fridge on the port side plus an additional unit in this curved cupboard on the starboard side as well. We also have all the regular bits and bobs you'd expect of a high spec galley and it feels very beamy in here. I like the fact they kind of split the surfaces. We still retain a really generous companionway to lead us up onto the higher level of the saloon. And here things are tremendously sociable. We've got a big C-shaped wraparound lounge area to port. Again, vast windows, tremendous views all round. And opposite that, on the starboard side, Another very relaxed, inward-facing settee, plus a pop-out TV above that. Now let's head straight down to the accommodation, because that is also rather pleasantly arranged. Now, of course, on a lot of flybridge cruisers, the idea of a private stairwell to the owner's cabin is very attractive. But of course, it takes up too much space on a 57-footer. So what they've done here is divide the single stairway in two. It leads forward to the VIP double in the V of the bow. There's also a twin there, plus a shared bathroom that's also used as a day head. But if you head down to the right hand side and turn aft, we find ourselves in a really very pleasant owner's cabin. Full beam, as you can see. Huge windows. Excellent headroom, really, really good. And in spite of the fact 
that they've shifted the engines in the engine room way forward to aid the uh, weight distribution alongside the fuel tanks and use long jack shafts to the IPS drives further aft, you certainly don't feel like you've lost any space in this owner's cabin. It's very generous indeed. We have storage units and a surface there for your knickknacks on the port side, plus neat little bedside boxes on either side. Beautifully done too. The joinery in here is, is lovely. On the other side, we have another inward facing tee for two. Again, with little storage boxes, a place to put your cup of tea. TV mounted on that forward bulkhead, and a pretty generous ensuite facility too. Again, its own big window and opening porthole. It's not my particular choice of wood, this, quite dark. I prefer brighter, lighter, more Nordic style woods. But it's certainly very well put together. It's wonderful. And the uh, shower compartment, with its rain shower and its uh, handheld unit, is very generous too. You could easily fit two people in there in the morning for a sociable shower before you get on with your day. Now let's go and have a look at that VIP cabin in the forward part of the hull. And I say in the forward part of the hull because as you step in here, you see there's quite a pronounced taper. I mean, this cabin is positioned quite a long way forward to get best possible use out of the internal volume. But the taper of this part of the hull is very pronounced, as you can see. It's only really the width of the bedhead there. We can't actually take it out while we're here at the Palmer Boat Show, so we can't verify that it's particularly soft riding, but it certainly looks like it ought to be. The finish again is very good. It feels quite high grade. And the fit out is quite modern. Nice blinds instead of curtains. Everything feels very clean and pared back. It's not too opulent. It's not in any way oppressive. And you get loads of hanging storage in these cabins too. I think on both sides here. It's very generous. It's definitely a boat that you could uh, live on if you chose in relative comfort. And here we have the shared heads compartment that also operates as the day head. Bit of a squeeze to get the toilet in there beside the shower cubicle. It's a little bit tight, particularly if you're a large guy. But it does well enough. And we also have a little bit of ventilation there from the opening porthole. And the twin cabin, on the port side, that's a fixed twin, so it doesn't convert into a double. But again, headroom, really, really outstanding. Got to be around about six foot seven, I would think. And again, a similar size of cupboard with hanging storage and drawers, plus power points for your various knickknacks. And a properly generous window too. Lots of light, lots of views all over this boat. Now let's move back up the stairs and find our way on top to the flybridge. Now I think we access that on the starboard side here. There we are. As we do so, the finish is very good, although I have to say these little uh, stainless steel edges on these teak steps, they do leave a bit of an impact on your, your, your feet. You do feel those as you walk up them. So with bare feet, that's not entirely comfortable. But when we get up onto the flybridge, that's 16 foot two beam. You really do feel that here. We have a starboard two-man helm station, fully appointed that, and set a little way back from the wind deflector, so we've still got room for proper sunbeds forward of that. So again, a really sociable space. It's made all the more so, of course, because opposite that helm, if I shift myself back, there's another one of those wraparound C-shaped dinettes. That's very nicely done. Behind that, of course, we have another wet bar with sink and griddle. Plus, as you would expect, if I open these doors, a fridge oh. and Another fridge, there we are, two fridges. So you certainly don't have to pop down to the uh, lower galley to service your guests up here. A 
and at the back end, I guess you could call this slightly more conventional, or maybe it's the opposite. It certainly differs from what we see down on the main deck, but we have here a wraparound aft unit that enables you all to face forward. It feels distinctly safe, distinctly safe for a, a, a big flybridge, a big full-size flybridge. It's the kind of flybridge where you'd be happy for your kids to come up top and take a seat and you wouldn't feel you've got to keep your eyes trained on them every minute of every day. As for that helm station, well as I say, it's pretty high spec. We get a pair of 12 inch plotters there and they're on a kind of angled plateau that recesses into the dash top so you can shut them away, keep them safe. We also have a very swanky six boat steering wheel, leather trimmed with little paddles on either side with your various controls for your systems twin throttles plus the joystick and the bow thruster all on the right hand side here with excellent views of the parameters of the boat. Makes it very easy to park. The lower helm is pretty much a mirror image of the one up top. I imagine most people who buy this boat will use the upper helm more than the lower but again it's a pretty cool place to be. Lovely quality seats here. Big views all round. Fairly narrow stanchions and all the equipment you want on your right hand is exactly where it should be, your throttle, your thruster, your joystick. Another cool feature to help preserve that flow of light and keep those views open is the flybridge roof, the overhang above this aft settee. It's not just a straight level moulding, it curves slightly upwards just to keep this aft view a little bit more open, a little bit more gratifying. If we make our way forward past these cutaway boardwalks with their pretty carbon fibre detailing, we'll see you have the diesel filler down in here in its own trough tucked away with a drain hole to keep things tidy. I have to say this uh, white fibreglass is particularly blinding in the Mediterranean sun, but I'm sure there are options for that. You know, take a step up towards the bow to preserve headroom down below in those forward cabins. And what we're greeted with up here is again very impressive in terms of its scale. You keep having to remind yourself this is just a 57-footer. It basically comprises a set of forward-facing sun loungers with backrests that can be elevated for extra comfort. Or you could drop those backrests right down and again integrate very sociably with this big C-shaped lounge. And this boat is uh, rated to carry 12 people and every one of them could happily sit up here and relax. Now let's make our way back aft down the port side. Again, there's the uh, diesel filler for the port tank. And we see here we have a third helm station on the port side, really perfectly placed, very useful, because of course the uh, primary helm stations, both on the main deck and on the flybridge, are on the starboard side, so that's well considered. And we'll take a look down here at the engine bay itself. Because what really strikes me here is the fact that Aston Doer has done such a tremendous job given how far forward it's positioned its engines. Mm, let's pop down onto the tread plate and spin around. Now here we are, Volvo Penta IPS 950s. There are options of course. And there are the tanks on either side, 1,200 litres each, so 2,400 litres in total. So all that weight is put in a very sensible position, and we use very long shaft, as you can see, running straight through here, all the way aft. And if we nip over to the starboard side here and peek through, you see there are your IPS drives. So it's beautifully arranged. Loads of space for servicing, loads of space for the generator, the air conditioning unit, pretty much whatever else you want to fit in here. And yet, when you're in the accommodation, it certainly doesn't feel like you're being pushed in any way for space. This new Aston Doer AS5 then is a pretty satisfying bow. There are clever little design touches all over it. It's not very showy or ostentatious or flamboyant like some Aston Doers from the past. It's just subtly impressive, little features that just improve the view, improve the light. 
With the top rated engines, it performs a little bit too. According to the builders, it gets up to around about 32 or 33 knots. And at around about 1.4 million euros plus tax, it's also relatively accessible. So if you want a fairly modestly sized flybridge cruiser that packs a lot into its proportions and does most of the really important things very well, then this new Aston Doha AS5 is well worth a closer look.